We would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on which we work, live and learn. We pay respect to the First Australians, their cultures, connections with the country, kin and community. We would like to acknowledge and respect the Elders, both past, present and emerging on the land on which we walk. Saturday is Anzac Day. This is going to be a very different Anzac Day. One that sees us remembering, from home, all the Australians and New Zealanders who have served and died in war. We won't have the opportunity to march or attend dawn services, but we can still remember all those women and men who served their countries in war. We remember this past history of war and pray that in the future, all people will work to make peace, not war. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. I love you just as the Father loves me. Remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My commandment is this, love one another just as I love you. The greatest love you can have for your friends is to give your life for them, and you are my friends if you do what I command you. This then is what I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Jesus Christ. Today, we enjoy the freedoms won for us by the Anzacs. Please respond to each prayer with, Hear our prayer, God of peace. For the many women and men of Australia and New Zealand who died during the war, Hear our prayer, God of peace. For the people who are still suffering from wars of the past, Hear our prayer, God of peace. For the children whose families have died during the war, Hear our prayer, God of peace. For children who have been separated from their families because of war. Hear our prayer, God of peace. For people and nations suffering from today's wars. Hear our prayer, God of peace. For all people working for peace between nations. Hear our prayer, God of peace. It is fitting that we should remember before God all those who have laid down their lives for us, and our country, and for the liberty of mankind. Let us call to remembrance in silence those who forsook all the call to serve, the sailors, soldiers, and airmen who went forth and returned no more, the ministers of health and healing, the chaplains, doctors, and nurses who served others but not themselves, the men and women who have gone from this district. Those whose names are written deep in our hearts and who are more than just conquerors through him who loved and gave himself to us. Please stand and remain standing. They shall grow not old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them, lest we forget. Lest we forget.
As we celebrate our Anzac tradition again today, and we think about the Anzac le legacy that we inherit as Australians, there are so many stories that are sad and powerful and tragic and heroic. And we bring all that together today in our, as we remember, as we commemorate the tradition of Anzac. During the COVID lockdown, one of the opportunities I had was just to do a bit of reading. And I read recently a book about the New Guinea campaign in World War II. And I just thought I'd share a little bit of that story with you. It's just one part of so many stories of the Anzac tradition. In 1942, Australia was in a desperate situation. The Japanese were all conquering and coming right down through Southeast Asia 
and had, con and had uh, occupied the important port of Rabaul in New Guinea. And there was fear that the Japanese would continue their southward march. And in fact, they did. In May 1942, they sent a huge fleet from Rabaul round south into the Coral Sea with a view to capturing Port Moresby. And that affected the, their first defeat of the war with the Battle of the Coral Sea, which was more a stalemate than a victory for the Allies, but at least it stopped the Japanese invading by sea Port Moresby and cutting off Australia as an American base for the Pacific. So what the Japanese did instead was look to attack Port Moresby by overland. There was an Australian force rushed together and sent to Port Moresby early in 1942, the 39th Battalion. And they were young men, they were boys. They weren't well trained, they were just pitched together to form a force to fortify Port Moresby from attack. Now mostly, they were just young men straight out of school, 18, 19 years old. They didn't get proper training. They were sent there mainly to build defences, to, to build walls and to dig ditches and to unload ships and to do all those manual labour while the government and the army waited for our better troops, our better trained troops to come back from Africa. But the Japanese didn't wait. They landed a huge force of about 14,000 troops up here on the northern coast of New Guinea. No one thought they could march an army across from Gona and Buna through to Port Moresby. They thought it was just impossible. The only troops the Australian army had ready to go at that point was the 39th Battalion who were busy digging ditches in Port Moresby and unloading ships. They sent them up the Kokoda track. It was about a troop of about 1,500, really inexperienced troops against about 14,000 who landed on the North Shore, who were highly experienced, ruggedly uh, independent, well-equipped, well-led troops from Japan. And up the track, this militia brigade, the 39th Battalion went. It was an impossible task. And they climbed over the Kokoda Track from New Guinea and met the Japanese. And over the, the Japanese, when they came down the track, when they started this campaign, they carried with them provisions for about two or three weeks. They thought they were absolutely sure they would be in Port Moresby within a fortnight. The 39th Battalion, poorly trained, poorly equipped, poorly supplied, fought the Japanese in an unbelievable delaying action right across the highlands of New Guinea. They lost an enormous number of troops. It was appalling conditions, really rough, terrible terrain. And the Australians fought a fighting retreat, which was brilliantly led by Australian officers. And they did a, just an amazing job to slow the Japanese down. And it took months for the Japanese to proceed across the track in the face of Australian opposition. Eventually, after enormous hardship and an enormous loss of life on both sides, the Japanese lost an extraordinary number of troops. The last battle was fought here just outside Port Moresby, at Irawaba village. And by that stage, Australian troops had been reinforced and the Japanese supply lines became terribly thin and they were eventually able to force them all the way back. The 39th Militia is a great story of young men who were tasked to do an extraordinary job in really difficult circumstances and did it. They paid a huge cost for that. But in so many ways, those terrified young men who put their lives on the line and stopped the Japanese capturing Port Moresby, which would have made, could have well, had the Japanese done that, could well have extended the Second World War by quite a long period of time.
to those young men and to so many men and women like them, we recall their story on Anzac Day. They made unbelievable sacrifices for us in the face of extraordinary odds. That's why we keep celebrating this day. That's why it's important to keep remembering the story of Anzac. So let's do that today. Let's honour their sacrifice, their commitment, their, their success and their failures, their difficulties in all, of, in all of our history going back so many years, lest we forget. This Saturday, Australians will commemorate Anzac Day by standing in their driveways at 6am with a candle and listening to the last post. We encourage you to do this. Please take a photo or a video and drop it into Mr Page's submission folder. We will use these photos in our school magazine and the videos will be used to create a montage that will be uploaded for everyone to share.